all aboard the fiscal fun train. We're riding the rails of the US economy and guess who's blowing the whistle? Peter Schiff, the man with the plan. Welcome aboard, Peter. Dr. Doom Schiff, our conductor of chaos. When he's not calling out the track ahead, he's making fiscal magic at Euro Pacific Capital. The market just thinks that we can go right back to where we were. They're wrong. That that ship has sailed. We're done. The, the, the years of low inflation are over. We're, they're not coming back. There, there is so much inflation in the pipeline. And the dollar right, is going to start to really fall. Can't afford to pay you any money because they've already loaned it all out. It's stuck. So uh, they're all insolvent. They're all going to collapse. What's going to happen is the Fed's going to end up bailing them out with inflation. So you're not going to lose your, your money, but your money is going to lose its value. All this is, is going to happen. And the, this, the, the, the situation that you described, we, the, the piper is going to have to be paid here. Can you feel the heat? That's hyperinflation coming around the bend, all thanks to Dr. Doom's foresight. And with the banking blunder this year, we might need some extra coal. The Fed? Well, they're shoveling as fast as they can. Will they keep the steam or blow the boiler? Only time will tell. U.S. Next time? Maybe keep both eyes on the track ahead. Regional banks then are going to be fucked. And so they're going to start collapsing. The government's going to step in. They're going to print the shit out of money. They're going to inflate it again. And as they inflate the money supply, they're going to have to raise rates again, which is going to pull people out of regional banks even faster. It's going to pull people out of the stock market. So everything consolidates into like four way too big to fail banks. The stock market fucking struggles for God knows how long. And now everybody's putting their money into T-bills, but that's the government that you're now betting on. And if you're right and de-dollarization is happening like crazy because, and I can't remember if you said this exact thing, but right now, the BRICS nations are creating a new currency or threatening to that's backed by gold. And so now your own thesis comes back to haunt us as Americans. And people are like, holy shit, you're inflating this thing to deal with the regional banking collapse. And now we've got, oh, hey, this other sexy thing over here, which is backed by gold. And now, and because I am a believer in a more technical future, I think people are also going to flee into Bitcoin. I get it, you're not a Bitcoin guy, but I'm just saying for a, a techno person like myself and for a lot of younger people, I think that will make sense then. We'll debate that later. They sell bonds to the Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve buys those bonds and puts money into the government's checking account. And then the government just spends that. But when the government spends that money, what it does is it reduces the value of the money that already exists. So everybody's paycheck is diminished in value. Everybody's savings are diminished because now prices go up because you have more money in the economy without new production to give that new money value. And that, that increase in price that is a result of this deficit spending and money printing is basically a tax. But the, but the people don't realize they've been taxed. So the politicians love it because they can pretend that the voter is getting something for nothing because the voter doesn't make the connection between the price hikes. And if the economy is really you know, booming so that prices are dropping, you don't even notice the price hikes. But now the problem is we've created so much money, especially after COVID and all the money we printed there, which was you know, off the charts you know, crazy during those years. Uh, we now have so much money in the pipeline and the economy is now being uh, you know, crippled by more regulation and, and other things that are making it less productive, uh, we're seeing much greater upward pressure on prices. But I tried to make the point earlier is that it, we would have even seen more uh, uh, movement in the CPI earlier if it wasn't rigged. I, I started to say that the, the CPI we had in the 70s is not the same CPI we have now because in the 1990s, they, they, they changed it all. They changed the methodology for computing price increases. And their goal was to have a lower CPI because they claimed that the CPI was overstating inflation. And so they decided to fix it. You know, they fixed it, you know, like you would rig, you know, a sporting fix. event, you know, the fix is yeah. in. But if you measured the prices that we saw the increases in 2021, 2022, if you used the 1970s CPI and then took the prices that we were living through, they were double digit. I mean, we were probably the year that we had 9%, it was probably 18%. I mean, that oh, year, God. Yeah, yeah, that was probably, that was worse than any year of the 1970s or early 1980s. That's how bad it was. 
Once a prized passenger, the petrodollar's now missing its stop. Places like Saudi Arabia, India, and the UAE are jumping on different carriages. But hey, don't pull the emergency brake yet. The US engine's still chugging, a bustling job market and a revving GDP suggest the journey's far from over. For the thrill seekers, GDP serving up some loop-the-loops. Hang on tight. We should actually be enjoying even faster price declines in this century than they had in the 19th century. The reason we've been robbed of those benefits is because of government. And of course, there is a lot more regulation now uh, than they had then. I mean, we don't, the markets are not as free as they used to be, and therefore they're not as efficient as they used to be. And therefore, prices aren't going down as much as they would if the government got out of the way and allowed entrepreneurs to be more effective. Instead of having to waste resources and time on government red tape, you know, they could have devoted those resources to becoming uh, more, more productive. But there was another reason, too, that they were able to keep the inflation rate low, is we outsourced all of our production to China. <laughs> And, and so we had all these Chinese workers that would do the work for a fraction of what Americans would and in factories that didn't have to deal with all the regulations of American factories. And so we got all this stuff coming in from China that helped keep prices down. But the flip side of that was we lost a lot of good paying jobs and we ran massive trade deficits. And so now we have to deal with that problem that we created you know, trying to kick the can down the road because you're right about politicians and their time horizon. They can only see as far as their own reelection, which in America, in many cases, is two years. And as you said, people want something for nothing. That is the inherent flaw of a democracy. And, you know, that's why the founding fathers established America as a republic, not a democracy. And they tried to protect the country from the evil forces of democracy, which they refer to as mobocracy. So we're not supposed to be a democracy for the very reasons that democracies create the type of problems that we now have. We have a $33 trillion national debt that continues to grow trillions of dollars a year. And we finance it like Bernie Madoff did because we can't pay anybody back. So whenever a bond matures, we find some other sucker to buy it. And when we have to pay our interest, we find suckers to loan us that money too. But this only continues as long as the suckers are willing to keep lending. But when people want their money back, we don't have it. You know, you know during the debt crisis, we even admitted that, that we said, if we can't go deeper into debt, we're gonna default <laughs> because we're broke. So all this is gonna collapse. The dollar is gonna lose its reserve currency status. And then if Americans wanna consume, they're gonna have to produce. And, 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 and that's much harder than printing. And that's going to mean a lot of people who are not productive are going to have to start working. And a lot of people who have jobs, they have non-productive jobs. They're, those jobs aren't going to cut it in a society where we're no longer creating the reserve currency. They're going to have to go make something. Seems like the U.S. dollar's been hitting the gym. But, ouch, that $33 trillion weight looks heavy. So many zeros, it could break a calculator. What's the plan for that massive weight? Maybe hope for a lucky ticket. Remember the 2008 ride when printing tickets seemed like the golden ticket? But did it just lead to a bigger queue? Hyperinflation's in line, and it's not waiting its turn. But, whispers say, Peter's got a secret map. What's the next stop, Peter? With the, the, the sanctions against Russia, which was one of the dumbest things that Biden did, was punish Russia for doing exactly what we need them to do. Russia was holding a lot of its reserves in U.S. dollars and U.S. treasuries, which is exactly what we need the world to do so we can export our inflation. And we punished them for doing that. We said, you know what, we're going to take that away from you and we're going to deny you access to the SWIFT system. And we basically told the whole world, de-dollarize or we got you by the balls. You know, we could do the same thing to you. Uh, you know, so that was a wake up call for the world. We need it. We need an alternative to the dollar. And, and when they have an alternative, we're SOL. I mean, aren't they, are, we're gonna implode. So the markets are basically assuming that interest rates go down, inflation goes down, and so stocks are overpriced, bonds are overpriced, gold is underpriced, the dollar is overpriced. You have all these prices that are wrong because investors are betting on an impossible outcome. 
because they don't understand all the mistakes that the Fed made since the 2008 financial crisis. In fact, they didn't understand the, the, the mistakes that they made before the crisis. That's why they didn't realize it was coming. I understood those mistakes. That's why I warned the, about the crisis in advance. And I know everything they've done since that big a consolation to have a bunch of money that's practically worthless. So what people have to do is they have to position themselves now against that consensus by buying non-dollar assets, by buying dividend paying stocks around the world in the countries that I think are in best position to thrive in a post US dollar uh, reserve currency environment. Because America has benefited from the dollar being the reserve currency at somebody else's expense. We get to live beyond our means, but that's only because other people have been content to live beneath their means. So when America's standard of living goes do down because we can no longer just claim so much of the world's production with our printing press, other people are gonna see their standard of living go up. They're gonna consume the stuff that Americans can no longer afford. And so I wanna be invested and have exposure to the economies that are gonna, gonna expand as, as, as ours contracts. Countries that have you know, freer economies, uh, smaller welfare states, uh, sounder you know, fiscal policy, trade surpluses, you know, stuff like that. And I wanna own real resources, I think in, in the inflationary environment that we're in, you wanna own energy related investments, agriculture, uh, metals, industrial metals, and in particular precious metals. I think that what's gonna replace the dollar as the primary monetary reserve asset, it's not gonna be another currency. All right, my financial fanatics, here's the million dollar question. Are we saving or splurging like the pre-crash 08 days? Let's debate in the comments. If you're here for more Money Mania, don't forget to hit like and subscribe. Let's navigate these tracks together.